meet me for the first time and the thought would be she's so creative and I didn't know how people were saying that what about me was making people say that I was creative I learned to make jewelry in three hours a simple beaded set in three hours and the next day there was nothing I didn't know how to do I was walking through the airport one day and I saw that UGT had a store in the airport and they were selling the work of local artisans and I went up to them and I asked them how can I get my jewelry in your store remember I'm no professional in my brain at that time and they just said send us your Instagram page I did and by the time I was on my way out to the airport they were saying we want your stuff in our store we want your stuff in our store and I guess that whole experience of um, them seeing value in who I was and taking it and making it into money for me is something that I always wanted to give back to other people so when I opened my business I wanted to recreate that experience that UTT provided me with as an entrepreneur to other entrepreneurs you know giving them hope and giving them you know belief In 2011, I had traveled to London to be with my best friend and she had started making handbags. And in her process of making handbags, one day we were just talking about our dreams to the future. And one of the things we wanted to do was not just like, we wanted to have a business where we not only showcase our own work, but we wanted to showcase other people's work because we are both lovers of culture, lovers of art, lovers of creativity. So we wanted to be able to you know, share those things that fascinate us with the rest of the world. So that's really how the idea came about. Part of it is me seeing it alive in what UTT was providing for, for artisans and also it being a dream in my own heart. I sell raw material for crafters and that's a variety of crafters like I sell beads for jewelry makers, paint brushes for artists, um, stuff for cake decorators, paper for people who do paper craft but my mainstay is really the work of other local artisans so I sell jewelry from local jewelers, I sell candles from local candle makers, um, paper craft, leather craft, one of the things I thought of is in the pandemic, nobody was calling me for somebody else's jewelry or candles, but what they were calling me for was raw materials. And so I really wanted to be able to provide that for artisans, like particularly jewelry makers, because I am a jewelry maker, but then it kind of expanded into helping creatives find raw materials locally. So this is a funny story. I bought a place to match in a $10 store and I found that the beads, the things that they used to make this bead was so unusual. So I took it to, apart and used it to make a necklace. You know, this is all coconut shells cut in pieces that I took and I made. Somebody had done it previously and then I just put it together and made it into a necklace. And these were all, I think these are either curtain rods or shower curtain rods that were wooden that I took it apart and used it to make a necklace. I kind of like to take things that you wouldn't normally think of to make jewelry and make jewelry with them. But I also like to make jewelry that is exquisite and formal looking so that you can wear it to like something fancy. Maybe I'm a lazy jewelry maker because I love to make things that are quick and easy. So like I would just take this thing and then I would just find a pendant that I think would suit the occasion or the person i mean i'm very catholic right so you see i have a lot of catholic emblems in my store and then i would make just look at how simple i would just take it and then i have something formal that somebody could wear to something fancy it's a fancy necklace but it just took me like five minutes to make you know and i feel like i need to expose people to that especially in these critically you know tough economic times I am just so happy to still be standing because I feel as a small business owner and entrepreneur, I don't know how most people survived the pandemic. I know that I probably survived it by the grace of God. But of course I had to change my business model 
in a huge way I had to sell more on the supply side more than finished products because nobody was wearing jewelry for two years literally um, nobody wanted an expensive soap for two years they wanted to buy soaps in bulk you know it was just really a different nobody buying ornaments to decorate their house nobody coming home so we started to sell supply side beads and and ironically people were more into being makers now so people were doing diys at home making their own jewelry at home doing courses online writing books so it kind of worked for us to flip the script as well but i also had to use a lot more social media than i had previously used and be dependent on social media helping me i also had to um, find creative ways to uh, reach people like you know do more things more in front of the camera do more videos and change my skill set and that has been um, huge for me yeah. I could not imagine having a space and not having Marshall's chocolate apart from being Marshall's biggest fan I just thought the concept of what he has done is a tale I could tell young people when they come in when I could say okay he's one of the biggest soccer artists we know but look he went back to the land he went back into agriculture and he has been able to produce something from his agricultural pursuits you know he's been able to create a chocolate don't tum your nose at being creative don't tum your nose at being back into agriculture I feel like it's a tale that can inspire young people when they just experience this chocolate but I also like it because I have a lot of elderly customers who have a sweet tooth and it allows them to be healthy because it's 60% dark chocolate as well as satisfy their sweet tooth.